The time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we're gonna keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Pant Sula podcast hosted by the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with us, this is your first time tuning into one of our episodes and you don't understand who the, you know, who the AAPRP is. Uh, we are an independent mass party uh, with the objective of Pan-Africanism. Uh, so we define Pan-Africanism as a total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Uh, so my name is Jeffrey, and I'm joined with my comrades Jesse and also Evan. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, neo-colonial, neo-colonialism. Um, tongue twister today. I don't know. I'm getting tired of my words, but <laughs> <laughs> but before we begin, um, every episode we like to honor one of our ancestors because um, we understand that we are our ancestors. So this week we'll be honoring uh, Thomas and Carver and Carmen Pereira. Um, so before we begin, I'll go ahead and uh, give a brief definition of neo-colonialism. Um, so for those who don't know, neocolonialism is a form of like indirect rule. And according to Kwame Nkrumah and neocolonial, neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism, he states that the essence of neocolonialism is that the state, which is too, in theory, independent and has all outward trappings of international sovereignty, in reality, its economic system and thus its political policy is directed from the outside. Um, so we see that case within Africa on the continent, uh, you can name and pick a country for the most part uh, is, is, is dominated by uh, imperialist forces. Uh, now, obviously, you know, on the surface level, it looks like they're independent, you know, they're running the country, but a lot of the, the uh, tie-ins with the IMF and the World Bank, uh, essentially, it's like a revolving credit. Um, you know, a right. lot of the, yeah. <laughs> a lot that's of the, the part, uh, I guess, that's missed, you know, when you look at somewhere like Africa, you say, oh, you have all of these African countries, but they're ran by these forces it's not like they're independently having the masses of the people in control exactly. so yeah that's a and it's interesting because that's the neo-colonial aspect I mean, you don't see it indirectly but invisible yeah. you know very exactly. much real aspect i mean africom is another example yeah or well, the military bases uh throughout the continent um yeah southcom um south america so so yeah essentially yeah, you, you pretty much hit it on the head it's like an invisible hand um, you know, running, running the country through uh, economic means and forces. Um, so, yeah, I think you hit it on the head there. So I guess we could probably just discuss, um, you know, why do we understand that, uh, you know, in today's age, neocolonialism to be an effective means um, opposed to colonialism? Um, you know, why is it so effective in the way it is now? And what is also some of the ramifications we see with neocolonialism today? Well, one reason it's effective because of the political leadership. It look, they, they look, it looks just like you. Like you see, you see African or, or mestizo or uh, Arab face or whatever face that looks just like you. Then you think, oh, oh, we're free. Like, oh, we right. got, we got, we got people in, in power. And then you see, oh wait, they they drive a Mercedes. They drive in, uh, you know, all these expensive cars. They got all these. They live in, they live out in the. They live out in these like luxury mansions and and like we're still we're still busting our butts to like like they go pick this pick these pick these fruits or vegetables or grow these grow these grow this cotton grow this cocoa grow this this and yeah the distance i would say it's like we don't really get that clarity when you notice the distance of we we might we may be living here but the distance to the reality um when you're in a state, like this is a state where we don't have the means of our production, where the mass of the people are being exploited and you can't get that direct connection if you're not understanding it. Um, I had a point, I was just about to say this, I don't know, somewhere it just slipped me. I don't come back, <laughs> but feeding off you. Yeah. It happens to me every episode. Um, <laughs> Capitalism, <laughs> yeah, no. man, it, it, it attacks our brain. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that like the point you made there, Evan, too, in regards to, uh, you know, those leaders look like the Native people, um, essentially. So I think a lot of the times, too, people think that, oh, you know, you always hear the, the discourse of, oh, yeah, African leaders are running the, the you know, the, the Africa to the ground, right? Uh, yeah. Which is true in, in essence, and, you know, those leaders a lot of times are uh, handpicked by the colonial forces um, in most cases, uh, but at the same time, they're chosen by them, so they obviously serve the means uh, of those and express those interests um, as well. And I think there's also, I think maybe we could talk about, you know, the current state of, um, you know, neocolonialism in the sense of, you know, the, some of the misnomers around it, like, you know, people try to say China has neocolonial rule over Africa and people like to give, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> no, people may say other countries, whatever, but, um, you know, maybe you guys could give some, some light into that and, you know, we could probably discuss that as well. Uh, one one aspect of the of the whole is the fact that a lot of the a lot of the infrastructure that was left over from like actual like colonialism was is just left was left through. It's a matter of oh we got the we got the English we got the Germans we got the Portuguese or or the French out like out of, out of the the government out of, like some of the uh, military ports or, or military posts for civil service, but uh, when it comes to making sure that people have adequate health care, education, and so on, or make sure that people are able to produce for themselves, then and that's a little that's a little different story. You see, yeah. As in some of the, like, you see in a lot of cases like, during the draft for independence, that you you read you read this in uh, in Amakal Cabral, you read this in uh, France Fanon, you read this in uh, Rondi Nkrumah. And, uh, like where, wherever the, that this is our is the interest of us uh, the national blues are like the like the people the Africans who are who are uh, either educated brought by the the colonial power and they 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 they, they want their out like, well, like the masses want the colonists out the colonists out and they they fight alongside but then when it comes like Oh, we're, we, we got flag independence. And it's like, oh, you know, just, it just like, just take the jobs and like put all, all their, all their elite buddies in there. So, all right. And that's the big, that's the big issue. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, just speaking about the China relations, people like to say, um, oh yeah, China is, you know, cause they, they give out loans and, you know, is is the loans that they give are not predatory loans, and a lot of historically the loans that um, a lot of the Eastern Bloc countries, um, you know, like Russia or AK Soviet Union, um, or like uh, you know, I'm trying to think of something else, another country, um, you know, any other country you could think of that's you know on the Eastern Bloc, you know, those those loans aren't given with high interest rates essentially, uh, and in some cases they're given with low to sometimes even no interest rates. Um, especially given from a country like China, uh, you know, and the relations stem from over 60 years. <laughs> and there's been no signs of coups, political implications in any of the loans. And a lot of times with IMF, there's a lot of political implications with it if you can't pay back the loans. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't pay those yeah. loans back. You don't pay those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the yeah, whole reason why they existed, you know, these predatory loans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's the whole point of it. So I think people have to make that distinction and do engage in dialectical study to understand um, the relationships of, you know, there's, there's several books, you know, I could probably dig in my stash and pull them out a little bit. You should. <laughs> <laughs> there's one, there's one uh, by, I think, uh, Harpal uh, Farrar, I believe. I, I probably messed up his name. Um, this is a great book that kind of shed, shed some light, uh, shed a lot of light into that for me personally. And there's another book I just got um, called China and African Relations as well. Um, but I'll show that I'll put that in the camera and probably even in the description later to kind of um, show that. And there's been times too where China even stepped back in the situations where the situation wasn't viable for uh, the African nation. I can't remember the exact country, but there was a situation where things were getting, you know, they were economic turmoil, I believe, um, that country. And, you know, given the nature that, you know, China stepped back, I was like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll step back. We're not even going to impose anything and I don't the IMF has never done that I could, <laughs> I'll put my money I'll put my house on it or my apartment <laughs> on it 
that they've never done that. You know, I, I you know, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't done this study to see if they've done that, but I would I would put money that they, right. they haven't. So <laughs> so yeah, so um so yeah, so I guess maybe we could also talk about how how it's enforced in some ways, how neocolonialism is enforced and um how do they maintain it uh and operate it uh you know throughout throughout Africa. Uh, we're going back to Evan's point, and it's also the representation aspect. I mean, if you have somebody that looks like you, it sends off the illusion that progress has been made. So um, I think that's why it's the main, uh, one of the main reasons the forces use neocolonialism, because it sends off the illusion the masses have the reflection of themselves. And we have this progress token because of the advancement that we've made in technology and all these other uh, fields, people think, you know, there's so there's such a distance from the masses of the people and a very select bourgeois group of people that are representing these powers, um, hence having a political education to, to distinguish that. So, yeah, that's one thing I would say. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a lot easier um, when you have a situation where alien forces take over, uh, you know, political control. Or you could point to them and say, "Oh, that's the enemy." Obviously, you know this person doesn't look anything like me. I, you know, right. they don't, they don't, uh, they don't have any care for my cultural ways or anything of that nature. So it's easier to identify who they are and attack them. But neo-colonialism creates that uh, that buffer where you have an indigenous, uh, you know, capitalist class, you could say, or petty bourgeoisie, uh, where you're looking at them like, "Oh, they're the ones who are implementing these things." So. It's way more effective in that way, kind of just kind of reiterating that point. And uh, I think, um, you know, that's that's one of the ways it's enforced is by using using the native forces to to impose impose the interests of, of the ruling class. Or bad, I know you're going to say something. Yeah. Yes. yes uh, and another point is, um, is that, that even though it's a it's like a new colonialism that they use some of some of the same. Uh, forces that were present during colonialism, like a good old divide and rule. They say, oh, wait, they say, for example, oh, I, all the pe- people in power, all the people in power, they're, they're Yoruba, but well, we're Igbo and we don't like this. Or mm-hmm. they say, oh, you know, power Tutsi, we like we're Hutu, or they say we're, uh, we're Tigray, but we don't like the Am- uh the Abisha or something right, like that. Yeah. You, you're, you're able to, like, and and that comes from like the lack of development of uh of like, from, like during colonies that that sort of that over exploitation from colonies that that at some points if you don't have the mass uh, uh if you don't have that mass character for for people to uh, to not only understand the sort of the racial or ethnic uh aspect of colonialism, but also understand there's a class aspect too. Right. Then you'll get to the point where, where some of the divisions that were expo- uh, exploited during colonialism, they, they're still, they're still there. Mm-hmm. And not, and not only that, but also some issues. Um, I'm reading this book about like, the role of African women in revolution. And they, and one part was talking about Kenya, about how, like, like we know about the, the like, Kenyan land freedom army, so they're trying to kick the English out of Kenya, mm-hmm. but then when uh, the more conservative uh, KANU and KEDU, uh, like Jomo Kenyatta, like, like once they were able to get freedom, like flag independence, mm-hmm. like well, like there, like we don't we don't want to deal with them. Right. So, <laughs> so, so and so a lot, a lot of people were just a lot of um, like who were able to get that education. But from the from the from the British were able to get the uh, positions in the in the army and the MPs. Oh and wow! They, they, yeah. get, they get that, and and then as a result, and they didn't bother with the issue of the vast majority of the land being owned by mm-hmm. like settlers. So right, because they got that position, got that degree. <laughs> degree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my bad, y'all. I had to quickly uh, run. So this is the book I was talking about. Um, I know my thing is blurred out, and oh. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah. you know, I'll put in, I'll put in the thing. But yeah, socialism with Chinese characteristics, marketization of the Chinese economy, and there's a section literally uh, 
dedicated to African relations. Another great book I'm reading. Um, I know you guys probably won't see it. Um, some of you guys, okay, Black there we go. Yeah, Black Awakening and Capitalism, yeah, Capitalist America. This is a great book. And the reason I brought this book up, um, because the uh, author, Robert L. Al, this is an amazing book. He talks about domestic neocolonialism, which is something that mm-hmm. doesn't get talked about a lot, right? Um, and I think and when we see, you know, especially in urban areas, uh, you know, African communities here and the snakes, um, you know, we have all these black mayors, like, tourists, right. uh, you know, people, bureaucrats and stuff. Um, so maybe let's talk about that, you know, with the Obamas of the world and things of that nature, um, you know, how that is imposed domestically. It definitely seems to be an effective way for people to lend on that we've made it aspect, because I've seen a lot of talk of, I forget the sister's name, but some African woman was elected mayor recently. I believe it was St. Louis. Uh, I don't know which, but the fact is, this is a lot that's been happening since the 60s, y'all. Like, this isn't new. Um, But again, not having that political education sends off that like, oh, wow, you know, we got more. The more of us being in this system, we can actually dismantle it when that's just been proven through history to not be the course that's not the revolutionary way that's just reactionary to just assume if we can get involved we could change it that way so um it's just like evan was pointing to that class analysis that is just necessary to have um because if you don't have that you're going to just be that's just going to ruffle your feathers you're going to see that as a progress when it's been clearly shown that we we've had more we've actually had a time in history where we have more African people in these positions of power and our conditions haven't changed. Um, The masses of Africans haven't changed. So I think it's just a token that unfortunately seems to ring a bell for a lot of folks. And and on a related point, you you also have to think about uh, the we mentioned this a few times on, on this podcast about the role of, of media and playing a role in understanding of highlighting the like how how great it is like oh I, I'm finally able to I mean like I could grow when I grow up I could be president or I could be the mayor yeah. I could be I know I can <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you, like, like again like, like when we talk about the issue of collectivism individualism that is the idea like if we there are of more and more, if there's a larger elite class of us, then that will somehow trickle down, you know, uh, to the masses of Africans. And, and that's the case. Like, you, know, you have like the recent, um, um, mayoral election. You also have the, uh, the new head of the World Trade Organization is, uh, is a Nigerian African, right. an African woman. And, mm-hmm. and then, and that, and he's, but a lot of talk about it is still, I mean, you could talk, go a whole lot about the the uneven trade through, it, that is another aspect of the neocolonialism that, uh, that as his, uh, the global South countries are able to, like they're, all, they're only basically there to just export, export like the raw materials or export um, and manufacture some manufactured goods, but, as far as like getting like access goods themselves, it, 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 it creates this weird thing where they were areas where they were once able to produce for themselves. They have to, they have to like buy off the market, which makes it ridiculous. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you have things like the ditties of the world, you know, co-opting <laughs> things, you know, uh, you know, as he's oh, saying, his, his recent year, and, that, and that's, that's the purpose of neocolonialism, uh, domestically. Um, and even you could say, even on the continent too, is, um, you know, to co-opt, uh, struggles, revolutionary struggles at the end of the day. You want the people to look in a whole nother direction, which it comes into like black capitalism was the whole point of the Nixon administration to push at the, you know, in the sixties. Cause, you know, people have to understand the climate of these things. Um, you know, in the sixties, you had the likes of the Black Panthers, you had SNCC. Which is N, uh, SNCC, Student Nonviolent co- co- uh, Coordinating Coalition. Um, and you had so many, you know, uh, SCLC with uh, Martin Luther King. You have so many different movements and so many different radical tradi- uh, movements going on at that time. So the 
the enfor- the empire had to enforce the system where um they had to get the masses looking at other directions because you know they they could have um uh, you know the, the takedown of the system at the end of the day so they definitely ensure that by pushing that narrative of oh black capitalism or you know kind of you were saying jesse like oh you can make it within the system you know you could be a capitalist just like me just make money right. um the system is fine exploitation is okay um let's just do it that way so it's in a way it's to, it's to call the masses um at the end of the day and you know when you, when you get to that analysis uh you know you, you really see that and understand that to, to in its the full entirety um so maybe we could even talk about resistance to neocolonialism like where have we seen resistance you know i know i named a few that happened in the 60s is there any that we can name you know within that time period or after the current day whatever um what people are currently resisting or have resisted uh you know forms of neocolonialism we can look at Haiti. Right, Haiti. Right. Haiti was what I say. I'm look at what's going on in Haiti right now. They're resisting masses massively. Um, I mean, there's so many examples of people. The masses are not going to stop resisting. The goal is to just keep that resistance organized so that it's not, you know, usually you know, these strikes are wonderful, but that's what we want to have. The masses of the people we can not only strike, but have an organized strike consistently so that those systems can be dismantle faster. Yeah, and hey, look at and now in Haiti, and you look at uh happened in, in Burkina Faso a, f- a few years ago, look at uh, Blaise Campoe, uh you look at what's going on in Senegal, uh, you look at what's and you look at like some of the like land battles in in Zania, South South Africa, or uh look at the you look at uh, the uh, Colombo, the Colombo, the Colomberas in in uh, Brazil fighting against like the, like the there's one thing you you probably you probably didn't hear about uh, the uh, like the two awful people uh, Donald Trump and Jair Bolsonaro they're trying to uh, oh yeah to, like, like take the land from the Quilombos or basically the like the Maroons for of of, Af- of African as, as uh, formerly like freed uh, Africans. Like during a time of, when where Brazil had uh, like slavery, so they basically use that to privatize. Or you know, one our, our comrade Jamil has talked about is uh, Barbuda after um, after the hurricane. So I think it's Maria. It was a couple of years ago, but trying to like privatize the land with it um, for for a service of tourism and and of course like. One one video we'll uh, talk about. Um, one thing I was looking at briefly was the trailer for it's called Life and Debt. Uh, it's a documentary about the, the effect of IMF policies on Jamaica um, during um I think it was during a uh, Michael Manley's uh, um, premiership. So in oh, wow. uh, after his premiership and how that affects uh, you say and you have these like sort of like contrast between all the you see it like for the current countries you see this oh like oh like Jamaica like one long one long. Right. But then, <laughs> and then it's like you, you get all you get like masses of Africans who are just like yo how am I how am I gonna pay how am I gonna pay for uh, the milk I'm milk I'm getting from the cows or, or, or the right. food I'm doing it's just uh ridiculous yeah, like yeah. They, they paint that mirage that yo, you come here, it's so great, and it's going to the resort while the masses are suffering. Right, and it's, 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 the yeah. privatization, that's a key point. I, I mean, yeah, we don't even think of that connection. You know, you go on the cruise, it's like you're arriving on a small part of this island where the masses mm-hmm. of the people are struggling, and you might have this luxury to spend money, and that money that is accumulated is not going to them. So, I mean, that disconnection, that's just another example of neocolonialism is that these are just everyday examples we face, not even realizing uh, the source of those connections are rooted in exploitation, you know, and just like, mm-hmm. and, and that's, that's the, that's the long and short of it. And that's hard for a lot of people to see because it's, it just kind of hits at the core of it, but that's really why they felt the need to even form into neocolonialism. Cause when we look at colonialism and we see what happened that lasted up until a, time up until you know it evolved you know enough people revolted it had to change its form it had to become something else um 
and that's just what's interesting to just see how the transformation can happen because it always starts as one thing until it, you know, rises off into something bit, a bit more sinister because it's indirectly, you know, it's that invisible um, thing. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I was, I've been reading uh, Pan Africanism and Communism by George Padmore. And it's funny because I was getting to the part uh, I kind of left off. Um, like he was talking about Garvey, but right before then, he was talking about how the British Empire was the first one to see the fall of colonialism and the shift to change to neocolonialism at the end of the day, because mm. they had to say that, you know, it would, you know, it would lead to revolt, you know, the people were revolting. So they were like, we have to get to a more, um, you know, maneuver. And that, that's pretty much, it's funny because Nkrumah uses that same term when describing it early in uh, the book, Neocolonialism, The Last Stage of Imperialism. Uh, he talks about what neocolonialism, uh, it needs to maneuver and shift. And that's what we see now. Um, yes. all the time happening is that they, they make small concessions, um, obviously, and they, they co-op struggles and things of that nature to shift as, as the movements go. So, um, you know, it needs to be nimble, whereas colonialism was a little bit more rigid. Um, you know, it didn't really shift that, that much. You know, colonialism, I think, in, in that way, is more, is more flexible um, and nimble uh, to move with. And I think that's what makes it even more effective. Um, you know, we see, but it's, it's literally the last stage you know, this empire is, is crumbling. Um, so the one way we can defeat this is obviously joining the organization, fighting for justice. Um, we need to organize. Uh, the masses of us are in the organization. Once again, we don't say this because it's cool or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and you tell me, you, you, could, you could put literally 10 of your friends and yourself, you could put all your family members in one room and you ask who's in the organization. I'll put yeah. money, like one or two people, if that, put their hand up. So, um you know, we need we need the masses. You know, not every single body is going to join an organization. We understand that, but we need the masses to enjoy. I think the people. more we reiterate that, it's becoming a yeah. thing. Though. I mean, and that, that's you why know, we're yeah, going to yeah. constantly say it because yeah. we're just so. This society is just so individual. We're not told. If it wasn't for, thankfully, Jamila, uh, in the case <laughs> for me, um, and who else who have heard about the AAPRP, like. You got to say it because most of the time you're not hearing about no joining an organization. Most people are encouraged mm-hmm. to pursue their own. And not that that's bad if you have a talent or anything that you want to go in with your life. But to have the understanding that our struggle is an international struggle, that this is not something that we can do in a vacuum. It actually adds clarity to your own specific path. It actually it's, it, I mean, it informs everything. So it's a necessary thing. And it'll help you understand what neocolonialism and just the ways all of these things uh, manifest. But that political education is going to always be suppressed, you know, with the forces of neocolonialism, because it knows that the moment the masses of the people have that awareness and that awakening, because this is already the last age. So, I mean, we can just make it faster. We want it then or you want it now. I mean, it's going to happen regardless. We're moving to that direction, but we understand now that, we just have to have the masses of the people organized because the confusion doesn't have to continue, but it will if you're not organized, especially, you know. And 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 of course, like, even even though we know that there is, there are like objects are coming up in greater and greater frequency, that the ruling class they they they're they're planning for what they want to do next. Like you think about like, if you heard the term the fourth industrial revolution, the mm. interest of um, like if you have like something like the Green New Deal or the New Deal for Nature, like you hear stuff like like the introduction of of AI, uh, smart technology, like get, they're becoming more and more in vogue, and that's gonna that's gonna involve like more uh, it's gonna be like a different form of the neocolonialism, like instead of right. like sh- showing off for like oil or or like banana or fruit or or minerals, mm-hmm. it might be for like, or like some kind of minerals it might be for, they like, decide off for, oh, we got this, we got this great land space that you can come visit, like make like the like basically make the whole society like a big like national park, but we're doing it green because right. like it's, yeah. instead of, instead of, instead of like getting on people again on like nations for, not paying their debts because they're not doing enough to privatize or to free or to free their money or to free mm-hmm. trade, they're gonna do it because. Oh, they're doing stuff dirty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when they're just, when they're just trying to 
develop the nation to like make sure that people are able to feed quote feed themselves, clothe themselves, like do self for their own self worth within this kind of Yeah. No, uh, it's amazing what they have managed to I mean, I guess it's just for being around. The longer you're around, you've had time to consistently develop eerier tactics to just deceive the masses. And that's that's the reason why it may seem, but again, since we're in late stage capitalism, uh, a lot of that is just crumbling on its head real fast. Yeah, my bad, y'all. I was like going hard trying to find that other book. <laughs> I, was, I cannot find it. I imagine <laughs> so you I'll, put it, like I'll put it in shit. <laughs> Huge collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do, man. It was one of my more recent books I've got to. So, but yeah, but to your point, Evan, um, I think even Kamala was was seen speaking about like you know the war being over water now and stuff. It's like what it went from oil. She came out and literally said that you know, the war is a part of oil, and um, you know potentially it could start being part of water and stuff. And like, I mean, water reserves and stuff. I mean, a big like a a big part of the occupation, like the dispute over Kashmir, is over water. Like the like the water from the uh, the yeah I forgot the the, the range of the range mountain <laughs> range of it uh where Mount Everest is you know around that area so uh, a big part of this water and the uh, and you see that with, uh, occupation of Palestine like over like, over water resources and um, separating it to the settler colonists uh, the, the Zionist settler colonists you, you see that like. Like they've been in Bolivia, that the Coca Chamba of revolt, like about over like for water privatization. You saw, you see that uh, the among like for example the death of the, the assassination of Bertha Caceres uh, over a uh, uh, resource. Uh, you see it in the standing, you know, well, standing rock. You see that with Flint, like like all about water, like all is about water and who gets to. Who gets the who gets clean water? Who doesn't? Who who, does right. who controls it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I remember uh, reading um, about. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of on topic, but I guess it shifts gears a little bit. But um, more than Murder Incorporated uh, by uh, I think I talked about this on the last episode. If I'm not mistaken, this book uh, with Mumia Abu Jamal, Free All Political Prisoners, mm-hmm. and Stephen yeah. Victoria. And um, they talk about, I was remember skimming through it and reading, they were talking about how uh, the nation state and the military, um, you know, pretty much are in cahoots with, like, even video games, people who produce video games um, to get them, like, Call of Duty, like, they, they actually have ties with the U.S. government um, and to help recruiting for the military and things of that nature. Um, so you see these little these little things to... to uh, Everything is political. To, the interest, exactly, yeah, to help the interests of the state and stuff. So they're they're trying to get people young, and obviously, you know, you know, they do already go to colleges, they already go to high schools and stuff to to recruit already. So, um, you know, and a lot of people don't, especially if you're, uh, you know, oppressed people, um, you know, working class, working poor class people, uh, you know, a lot of times you're just trying to get free education, and even within that, uh, it was and education it was the is statistics. designed to fit into a bourgeois paradigm. So yeah. It's the statistic for even that that people get school free by like, school rods are pretty low. Like everyone doesn't really get it, even though they touted that everyone is is going to get it. It doesn't happen all the, in all the, in all cases. Um, some people join the military and don't get all their school fees paid for. So, um, but yeah, it's just the ways that you know neocolonialism works. You know, they train you, um, you know, subconsciously to uh, want to promote the system, be a part of it, and integrate in it um, as your only means and the only way to salvation. Uh, which is not true. It's historically true. It's not historically true. Um, as you've seen, every anyone who's been able to to create a better society has overthrown um, exploitative systems, whether it's feudalism or capitalism. So, once again, organize y'all. <laughs> and, and, and and get your point on the on military military is um one, one thing I would like to talk about is now and we talk about organize 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 but. Like another part of a uh, neocolonialism isn't isn't just isn't only just like we really talk about the like, military occupations. We talk about uh, the like financial monetary policy. But how about when there's resistance, but there are parts of that struggle that end up 
leading to a neocolonial situation or pr- or mm. furthering a neocolonial situation. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that that we see all the time. Um, where you have to you have to fight it on two fronts a lot of the times. Where you're fighting for liberation is that uh, you have ind- uh, indigenous and native forces who want to institute the the interests of the ruling class or the former colonialists at the end of the day because they can get a piece of the pie and get some money and hoard some type of wealth. Um, so yeah, there's situations, uh, you know, with Mobutu in, in the Congo, you know what I mean? So, you know, overthrew, um, the kill, who took it, had a hand in killing, uh, you know, the Mumba with like, you know, CIA and other, uh, other forces as well. So, and, you know, he was an extension of, of neo-colonial rule, um, so I mean, there's so there's so many other examples too with that, um, you know, in regards to that. But I think we always have to understand that, um, you know, there's there's always been enemy. I know we're reading Garvey and Garveyism, and um, you know, so far reading about it and so many different forces he was going up against to try to to overthrow what he was doing. Um, and that's something we we've seen throughout. We've seen with Malcolm X. Everyone sees what happened with Malcolm X and things of that nature. Uh, Martin Luther King, you see what happened with him, and you know the state had an arm in overthrowing and um, you know killing these leaders due to what they stand for. So, and then they even use once again they use people who look like you. <laughs> they right, use people that's who, the whole yeah, thing. They use people they conspire against the people in your crew, and yeah. and then that you know, and that's that's like, you can learn from what happened to the Black Panthers. You know, uh, there's so many mm-hmm. examples as you said throughout history. Um, that's the whole existence, you know, criminals in action, CIA, they conspire, they develop conspiracies so that you just, you know, you sow enough discord. And that's, again, a stress to having uh, self-criticism, positive criticism, and also um, just being efficiently organized so that you're not just responding to this confusion instead of talking to someone directly, which is something you should do. Uh, you just, you know, you air it out online or you do an unprincipled reaction and then you, you create further confusion. So, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And, and yeah, another point is that, like, how, how often do you see, uh, and you'll, and again, this plays a role media, like, they'll play up, uh, certain, they probably up certain uprisings or, right, so whomever, and saying that, like, like they use the words like freedom, democracy, human right. rights, <laughs> and it, it like okay, but freedom for who? Right. Like human rights for right. on what? Like, yeah. like you and they'll and they'll yeah and they obviously like, like as we talk in our like our analysis that there's always a positive and negative of everything that that even when it, when there is like a, a term like a term you might might have heard before it's called a cult, like a color revolution basically you like overthrow a government. And it's the face of like of the face of a democracy, like a nonviolent like, demonstration or mass movement. But then, and then you realize, oh, like, these people are basically doing the same thing. That all all the people were doing, <laughs> <laughs> like all the yeah. all the all the problems of employment, like unemployment, of, of like food, like food distribution, wealth distribution. This like it's still the same in some cases, in a lot of cases even worse because you because like in a lot of cases they don't. You don't see like the class character, like if you see, um, and like, like a major, major example is um, like Venezuela. Like, you see like, some of the demonstrations against the 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 border the border body and go- government in Venezuela. Like obviously mm-hmm. there there are contra- there are contradictions. Like we're not, like, I think one mistake that they sort of like people who aren't radicals is that they think that because we defend like a government or a nation or whoever that we're saying they're perfect. We're not saying they're perfect. But <laughs> we're saying like, yeah, you get, you have to understand that the mainstream, like the capitalist media is going to put them in a way that, that, um, finds their own interests. So. Right. It always exactly. undermines their, the masses of their interests. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every time that was a great example too. That's a great example that was going on in Bolivia, going on in, um, um, uh, Dan just left me. <laughs> he just went to Venezuela. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's a super super good example. Uh, as you can see, people are still fighting against against that, and um, you can see how uh, people organize consciously. Um, how it could with withstand a coup, <laughs> you know, with with what happened, what's going on in, in those areas. So, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, do you guys have anything else? Any last words? Um, before we wrap it up. Um, the, right there is right. If you see the, the notes what we have, I put down a lot on the Oklahoma. So there is a lot about it. it mm-hmm. Like you, you can talk about like, even if you like, we talk about like and since we're all in the snakes, like gentrification in in a way is like a, a form of the you know, It's like and and we talk about Obama, uh, Kamala Harris. That uh, like for for Obama, like even though uh, W started like the W administration started AFRICOM expanded like Africa expanded under Obama. Right. And and you figure that Kamala uh, Kamala uh, uh, of of uh, 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 who knows. Yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. Like like they're anti people's class, but I just want to make sure I don't I don't like mispronouncing any of if I don't have to, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um you have to think like as uh, you were saying about the, the wars over water, like they want like one hot point is over the dam in uh like between the issue between uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Egypt. Uh, the, that might be a, a point of a struggle. Of course, uh, like some of the left wing like left wing uh, parties like making progress in South America or the Caribbean. That might if if you see if you see more sanction talk more. We gotta, we gotta do right. something about the democracy. We gotta do this. Like, you, 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 you'll know, you know. You know, that's the sign. Yeah. That's the signifier right there. <laughs> you hear anything like that? It's like, mm, mm, no. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, uh, I would only just add to what you're saying by saying what we said earlier, which is to organize so that you can understand these forces not being misled by the animation that they often give because they've learned clever ways of, you know, emotional appeal and all these other things that um, unfortunately seem to work. But if you are organized enough to understand that, you know, you have that universal notion, dialectical materialism, as we always say, but just really organize. (laughs) Yeah, organize, 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 right? Um, So yeah, we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Pantula Podcast. Um, as we do every episode, we would like to uh, implore for you guys to help us out with our comrade Jamila, who's been in the hospital for two months now. Um, she got in a really bad accident. So if you guys could definitely help with her medical expenses. Um, as you know, in the United States, everyone isn't afforded free health care. Um, so it goes them out enough. So if you guys could help uh, anything, if you guys could put a dollar as anything, it would definitely be great help. So definitely appreciate that. Um, but other than that, we look forward to connecting with you guys again. Um, hope you guys tune in, tell your friends to, you know, subscribe to our channel, like, share, and comment. Um, and we host this every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, until then, we look forward to seeing you guys next week or whatever. Or, or, or down with the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Free hood, oh, free hood comments. Free hook. 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 Free hook